Right. Hello, everyone. My name is Rishabh Pandey, and I'm a physics faculty at Ask Cartiers. Right. So basically, today we are going to cover electric current, you know, and its effects. This is the very first lecture of this chapter, and we'll be covering the basic introduction points and a bit detailed version of it. Right. Say the topics which are to be covered is. We will be talking about the introduction of the flow of the currents, that how basically the currents flow in a circuit. What are the components of the circuits? You know, battery, switch, bulb, all these the components of the circuits, and the symbol of those components. And I will be talking about these basic points in this lecture, starting with current electricity. What's current electricity? A steady flow of electric charge that moves through a conductor in a controlled way. Like for example, say if I have a wire like this, right? I have a wire structure like this, and it's filled with the electrons. And then it's, it's, it's filled with electron, 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 electron. Right, these are the carriers of the charges. Right? These, these are the carrier of the current. Now, point is that these, when they start moving in one direction, all of them start moving in one singular direction. They will produce a net effect. Point is that initially, before applying the battery or before applying the potential difference, all were traveling in random directions. Right? But when the potential difference has been applied, let's say here the potential difference is. Uh, v and here the potential difference is zero. We know that since water flows from high pressure to the low pressure, similarly current also flows from high potential to the lower potential. And since this end is the higher potential, all the current will start going in this direction towards the lower potential. And this has to be in a controlled way, like a steady flow of electric charges that move through a conductor in a controlled way. Controlled way means how to control the by applying, I mean, the flow of charges, flow of charges can be controlled, can be controlled by applying required potential difference. Potential difference if i want the current to be flowing in a very good speed and i'm in the very high speed obviously i'll have to increase the potential let's say if i increase the potential from v to 2v the flow of current will increase but if i want the current to be flowing in a very less speed and a less speed then obviously i'll have to decrease the potential so now i have decreased the potential from 2v to say Instead of zero, it has been one, one to zero. Very, very less potential difference, right? So here the current will flow in a very uh, steady way, in a, in a very slow pattern, right? Now this, as you can see over here, this is without, without any potential difference, without any potential difference, and this is the case with. Potential difference. So, whenever I apply the potential difference, the electron or the charges basically start moving in a fixed direction in a controlled way, right? But if there is no potential difference, if I have not applied any kind of potential difference, they all move randomly in a different direction with their different speeds, right? So, the net effect produced by them will obviously be zero, isn't it? Right. Moving on, the next is conductor and the insulators. Conductors anticipate free flow of electric current because of the electron ro uh, electrons roam freely from one atom to another with ease. Insulators, on the other hand, oppose electric current because they won't permit free flow of electron from one particle to another. Let's say that I have these two materials. You know? So this is the first material. This is the first material. It's a metal plate. Assuming it to be a metal plate wire and or metal plate possible 
now instead of this i have taken in the second case i have taken this to be a plastic material plastic wire plastic wire right in the metal wire there are a large number of free electrons hai na many free electron but in the case of plastic wire there are rare free electrons rare free electrons now since the plastic wire has contain uh, a very less amount of free electrons will it allow the flow to be happening properly no it won't right it won't allow the proper flow of electrons but if it is a metal wire it has large number of free electrons hai na the electrons just need a small amount of potential difference and they are now ready to move right so in that situation if i have very less amount of free electron then obviously this cannot uh, allow proper passage of the electrons you know this, this will this will hinder the passage the flow instead i can say and this will allow free passage of electron so that is why this can i can say that yes why are conductors because they have got free electrons and you know, so they are called conductor which conduct electricity and they are called insulators because they don't conduct electricity they are called insulators right clear as you can see over here here in this case then it is uh, it's it's not a wire you know i mean it's it's the insulating ceramic here we have an insulating ceramic there are no free electrons and is, since they don't have any free electrons so there is no charge carrier in this case but whereas here they are these are free electrons isn't it free electrons and th that's why they allow the passage of electrons easily right next is electric current see electric current is denoted by the symbol i electric current is denoted by the symbol i and i'll say that the flow of electric charges or instead i can write it as rate of flow rate of flow of electric for any quantity if i have this word rate written i'll i'll tell you something that if for any quantity if i have the word rate written that means the particular quantity will be divided by time if there is a word rate in the definition that means if i write the formula of current it will be current is equal to uh, current will be equal to charge electric charge and charge is denoted by q charge and since it has a rate word over here so it will be charge divided by time i is equal to q by t next is this flow of electron in one direction in a circuit is called an electric current obviously you can write this as a definition or you can write this as the definition rate of flow of electric charges that electrons require energy in order to move obviously and this energy is given by this energy is given by applying potential difference potential difference right next is energy come from the electric cell in the circuit yes obviously and electric circuits provide you with the potential difference in general uh, uses which we have in our homes we have uh, when we purchase electric cells they are written 1.5 volt 1.5 volt basically tells you the potential difference you know which can be applied by that particular cell and then the cell has two terminals they are symbolized like this the larger one is basically the positive terminal the smaller one is the negative terminal these are the two terminals and for the electric current if i say yeah, unit of current then it will be unit of charge upon unit of time and unit of charge is coulomb 
time is second. So the unit of current can be coulomb per second, right? Or you can also say it in a common term that is ampere. So for the units, we can either write it as coulomb per second or we can write it as ampere, right? These are the various components of the circuits. You know? See, here we have, here we have, here we have a switch which decides whether the current will flow or not. Here we have the bulb. So as soon as we switch on the current, you know, say this is the positive terminal. So this will be the longer one. This is the negative terminal. So this will be the shorter one. So current starts flowing from here, here, here. So when the switch is on, and when the switch is on, current flows like this, this, this. As soon as it reaches the bulb, the bulb starts glowing. And then current moves, 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 moving on, moving on, and the current reaches to the negative terminal. This is how the circuit flows. Where, where, where? This bulb will be represented by this, switch is represented by this. Or for this, you can represent it as like this, or even you can represent it as positive, negative. So the circuit can be also be represented in this manner. So if I say that for cell, the symbol is positive negative terminal n. That's it. For bulb, the symbol is this will be the symbol. Right? And uh, then obviously we have the wires. Right? So these are the diagrams. Obviously, you just can understand huh, that uh, drawing this pictorial diagram is like a hectic thing. Instead of drawing this pictorial diagram, if I just draw it in the form of circuit diagram, this will be much easier for me to do so, right? So that's why we need this, correct? Common components are this. We have already discussed this. You know? In making a battery, positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of the next cell. Positive terminal of one cell is connected to the positive terminal of the next cell. Negative terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal. None of the above. See, basically in making a battery, what is a battery? Battery can, you can say that combination of cell. Combination of cell. So if I want to combine a number of cells, then it should look like positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of the another cell. See, this is positive and this is connected to the negative, correct? So yes, this is true. If I move to the other options, the positive terminal of one cell is connected to positive terminal of the next cell. See, is there any connection between positive and positive? No, positive R is never connected with the positive terminal, right? So that this is absolutely not possible. Negative terminal of one cell is connected to negative terminal of the next cell. Again, negative, negative are again not combined and none of the above. Obviously, one option is this, or option A will be the correct answer. Clear? Where can the key or switch be placed in the circuit? You know? Left side of the battery, right side of the battery can be placed anywhere in the circuit near the positive terminal. Basically, if I have a circuit like this, you know, I can understand that this is a circuit with a battery. And here I have a bulb like this. Connected via a wire like this. And say I, here I have the switch. Similarly, if I keep the switch instead of here, here, will it make any difference? Point is that we should not allow current to flow in the circuit anyhow. They should not be allow, uh, allowed to flow. And if I break the wire here, or if I break the wire here, if I break the wire here, in none of the cases, the current is going to flow in such a situation. So obviously, can be placed anywhere in the circuit. The other options are absolutely wrong. Right? So this was regarding the introduction and the chemical uh, electric circuits. Like we studied the components, the circuit diagram, the symbols, what is current? We studied that and conductor insulator, obviously. Then we had the introduction part, right? So please make sure that you are properly revising them. Thank you.